Welcome back, MTG Joe here. It's been almost a week since we got the drop of Explorer Anthologies 1. Uh, while I was missing some cards, Eidolon of the Rebels, uh, we did get a bunch of very playable cards in this Explorer Anthology that slot into a bunch of decks. Uh, this is a weekly meta breakdown, by the way, where we'll look at what's been the kind of hottest decks, best performing decks on the arena ladder for Explorer. We're going to look at best of one right now. Um, we'll do best of three Explorer next week once we get a larger data set. Um, and we're getting this data from Untap GG. It's a companion tool that runs alongside your arena client, tracks your win rates, loss rates, deck collections, syncs a whole bunch of stuff, tells you what decks you can build, what's doing well, easy to copy into MTGA. Uh, link is in the video description down below if you want to sign up. It's free to use a whole bunch of the functionality. Uh, and then you can just click copy to MTGA. Um, as well, I'll post these deck lists in the video description so you can just copy them in. Um, you'll notice like for this week we're doing the 28th through the through August 2nd. Um, I'm locked until it's seven days old for the new meta. Um, so they usually do this till they can curate enough data. So we'll see that for best of three for the following week. But I, I know some folks have been asking what's been working, what hasn't. So we want to go from here. So kind of the meta we're seeing Kalidas make a big impact. Uh, we got some spirit stuff. We've got um, Blue White Control since they have Supreme Verdict. Lots of different Vatlana War Elf or Elvish Mystic decks. Um, Siege Rhino is not good, um, in case you're wondering. It's, uh, I'm not going to feature it, but the deck list that does have a win percentage is 37%, so not great. In any case, we'll jump into it. We got Rakdos Sacrifice as the top performing deck. Uh, and this is kind of at a good point right now. You, a lot of people are playing these weenie style decks, whether it be Spirits, Line of Elf. Well, Mayhem Devil just machine guns these all down. You have Claim the Firstborn, which plays really good into a format that's heavily focused on being a collected company style format. So this gives you a lot of advantage here. And this is a very streamlined uniform deck that's actually pretty budget friendly if you have the mana base. Um, if you look at all these cards here, they're all uncommons, all uncommons. The only rare in the deck is Fable the Mirror Breaker beyond the mana base. So if you're looking to get into the format, uh, buying, like crafting the Rakdos mana base is also very advantageous because it gets you access to like eventually the Grease Fang combos and Mardu. You can play uh, Black Red mid range. You can go Jun Food with a Corvold if you want. There's a lot of directions you can take with this mana base. But in any case, what you're trying to do with this deck is Cat Oven Loops, so Witches Oven, Culture and Familiar, drain out your opponent. You got Mayhem Devil mixed in here too. Uh, there's a Gengantha's uh, Companion hiding out down there. Uh, but just drawing cards, you're sacking things, you're stealing your opponent's stuff. Uh, six ways to draw cards with Deadly Disputes and Village Rights. And then you also have Unlucky Witness for card advantage as well. Uh, next deck, Mono Blue Spirits, and there's a couple different variations of this, but the card that we got in this new set was Mausoleum Wander. So one mana, one one, flying whenever another spirit enters the battlefield. For the turn, Mausoleum Wander gets plus one one till end of turn, and then you could sack Mausoleum Wander, and it basically four spikes your opponent for uh, power, like Mausoleum Wander's power. So base, it's just, you know, one mana, like sack it to make your opponent pay one more if they don't. Uh, they get countered, and that's for instant and sorceries. There's a lot of ways to kind of make it bigger. You have stuff like Supreme Phantom, or just flash in stuff with like Rattle Chains and other instant spirits to give it a bigger buff. So this is kind of a way you can be tapped out on mana, but still hold up counter spells. Um, I've seen some versions that are like lower on Lofty Denial counts, higher on Slip Out the Backs, more copies of Brazen Bore, but your core of the spirits are there. You basically want to strap a uh, Curious Obsession onto one of these little dorks and then draw a bunch of cards and go from that. Um, depending on the meta, like how like removal heavy it is that you're encountering, uh, the number of slip out the backs would likely come up. I've also liked the bounce effects, like Brazen Bore and stuff like that. I also wouldn't be against even just seeing if it is a very creature heavy format, doing something even like Fading Hope. Uh, you do have the Shackle Geist in this version that does a good job of tapping down your opponent's stuff as well. Um, so I'll get to a video on this. There's been some folks that have been asking. Um, it's not really my play style. I was, to be honest, I found it a little boring, but uh, some people like these types of decks, so I'll give it a shot to get a video up. Uh, then we have Mono Green Stompy. So this is the list I, a uh, similar list I played. I got seven win run on the first day that it dropped. Mine was a little bit different, but we now have access to 
eight one mana accelerants that always add mana. So you can really easily go one mana spell, three mana spell, and then turn three collected company. Um, my version, I'm down, uh, I don't play any Pell Collectors, and then I play two Great Henges, uh, Vivian Monsters Advocate as well, uh, and then I play one more land being a Kazandu Mammoth, just maximizing your three drops. Don't really like Pell Collector that much, it's kind of a weak late game threat. Uh, it does play well like if you can curve out, but most of the time now your one drops are going to want to be here, and this configuration itself doesn't really have card advantage beyond the Werewolf Pack Leader, where with Vivian and Great Henge, it lets you really grind out those matches there. Um, but if you like these Stompy lists, it's really consistent now with having the 8-1 drops. Um, this version here is a little weak, like this configuration is a little weak to blue eye control. The Henge and Vivian helps you grind in that matchup. So that, this deck's actually really good against uh, the Rakdos midrange deck if you're running into that. Then we go to Mono Red Aggro. Uh, nothing new in this one because Wizards hates giving us mono red cards. Uh, no team or battle rage, none of that, but this version's uh, all in kind of annex version. Lots of cheap creatures, throw a cleave onto annex, smack your opponent in the face, Torbrand, Chain Whirlers, the whole kit and caboodle. Um, a little weak to graveyard hate, but or like to grease thing kind of decks, but uh, very aggressively slanted deck in that regard. Uh, actually ordered the pieces for paper so a lot of these cards are like dirt cheap to bake this deck in paper which is kind of cool it's like 15 cents 25 cents uh, I got like all of it for like 10 bucks other than like the Eidolons but we for Pioneer which is cool um, then we have Abzan Grease Fang so this is a new variation that we're seeing with the Abzan deck or with the Grease Fang combo. So the core of the deck is always black white. It's just kind of the accompanying colors. We've seen Mardu, we've seen Esper, and now we're going into green. And what the green gives us is access to uh, additional copies of vehicles in terms of Eska's Chariot. This lets us play another way to play a fair game of magic. Uh, this is also not weak to graveyard hate and lets us kind of attack in. You also have access to instant speed enablers in Grizzly Salvage, as well as Mulch, which is not instant speed, but lets you put more cards into your graveyard. Uh, Soren to reanimate your Grease Fangs. Ideally, you want to hit Perhelion. Um, and then you also have stuff like Wither Bloom Command. So, milling your po target player mills, and then you get to return to land, destroy target non land, sorry, non creature, non land permanent mana value two or less. This could be Rest in Peace. This can be Portable Hole, uh, Soul Guide Lantern, uh, anything like that. Uh, you can also kill something with low toughness, and then you can also drain and gain. Uh, another way to put cards into the graveyards are Fiend's Informant. Uh, then you got Old Rusty Boy that does things when things get milled, uh, and then kind of playing with that. So this version, I, I actually like it quite a bit. It seems like really, really grindy, um, but also just proactive. So you could combo your opponent. You can also just play like a fair Abzan midrange. Uh, if, I mean, you could, you could play a Siege Rhino if you want. It's not going to make your win rate go up, but you could say you played Siege Rhino. Uh, then we have Selesnya Angels. Uh, this is my configuration of the Angels that we did really well with last month. Got to number, uh, came in Mythic last month at number 16 with it. Uh, this version of Angels is more focused on propping the Resplendent Angel. Uh, so you have a number of ways to gain five life in a turn. So Lunark into Bishop into Resplendent Angel is the easiest. Uh, but you also have like Prosperous Innkeeper that helps you ramp and fixes your mana. And then Trellisar is another card that helps smooth out your draws. Uh, in the mirror, it helps you dig for a Johnny Strength of the Pride, which is a one-sided board wipe to kill your opponent that way there. Otherwise, you just have like the Righteous Valkyrie to buff your team, collect a company, and then some removal and Skyclave Apparition. Then we go to Mono Black Vampires. Uh, just featuring some decks. Usually we don't go to this low percentage, but I want to highlight some new cards. Uh, so this is a Kalidas deck, all mono black, so we are playing Soren Impervious Bloodlord. I uh, can cheat vampires into play, buff them, and uh, Lightning Helix by throwing vampires at your opponent. Uh, you're also topping out at Evelyn, which is a mono black card, if you look at its casting cost. Gets your card advantage that way, you also have Champion of Dust to provide you card advantage. Uh, Kalidas, when things die, you get zombies and it could grow bigger. Uh, you got like a bunch of removal, you got Murderous Rider, Heartless Act, Fatal Pushes, um, Silver Smoke, Smoke Ghouls, kind of a combo with Soren, 
where you can sack it every turn. You gain the three life, and then it comes back from the graveyard to the battlefield because you gain three life. So it's a repeatable kind of effect in that way. Um, some ways to kind of reanimate. Uh, so if you're like a mono black, give this one a shot. Uh, then we have Rakdos mid. So this deck's very powerful in best of three. It's probably, well, it is the, the most played deck. In best of one, however, it's a little bit hard because this deck really takes advantage of having a sideboard to really tailor your responses. I don't think in best of one you want to be on Croxa, at least not more than one. Um, the games typically don't go long in terms of grindingness, so you do want to be able to play to the board more. Um, a card that I think would be reasonable here is like Invoke Despair. I've also like Cut to Ribbons in this deck. Uh, cut being four damage, you can hit all the green creatures. It can hit uh, the angels that matter on turn two. It also can be a late game mana sink to win with ribbons. Uh, so it's a card that I consider there. Like I said, Invoke Despair. Um, I forget the card name right now. It's a five mana Goblin Menace. You cast it and then you could cast a artifact. Oh, sorry, you could cast an instant or sorcery from your graveyard. It's going to bother me. One sec. I just played it. Goblin Dark Dwellers. Uh, so you can play Goblin Dark Dwellers. I've seen some versions play on License Hearst in the main board. So there's a couple different avenues you can go with this list, but if you're just looking for the kind of like the answer your everything two for one deck, this is something to take a look at. And it's another good Kalita shot. And then we go to Boros Feather, Boros Prowess. Um, so really with this deck, we got the addition of Favored Hoplite, which is a one mana spell. Whenever you target it, gets plus one counter until end of turn. You prevent all combat damage that's dealt to it. Um, so you're playing this with stuff like Clever Luminancer, Skull Scar Mage, Tenth District, um, Illuminator Virtuoso in a Feather Shell. That also gives you kind of recurrable stuff. So you're playing stuff like Reckless Rage is a one mana removal spell, various pump effects that could trample, and you're just going to make a big creature that just overruns your opponent in that respect. And then lastly, um, there's not a huge amount of games of blue-white in terms of specific lists. There's a lot of variations. There's some that are on Lotus Field, some that aren't. The configuration of a lot of these decks vary slightly, so we're not getting a unified list. Um, is this deck the like extremely, extremely good? Maybe. Um, it's very good in best of three. Uh, it's pretty much full Pioneer Port at this point. It's going to be a very represented deck. A lot of people like playing Control. It is boring as hell to play against. Um, they have a lot of just flexible answers now, a lot of exile removal. Uh, they got access to Supreme Verdict, which had, had, had hedges the Spirit matchup, which was a bad matchup for it, being uncounterable. Just an unconditional four mana board wipe, very good. Uh, you also have access to Farewell, Wandering Emperor, all that. So this is a card, a deck you need to be mindful of when you're on the ladder. Um, so as we always do, kind of looking at my profile. Um, if you haven't seen, I did a thing. I hit number one Mythic. Uh, so I actually did it this month with Mono Red Alchemy. Um, but we've been playing a bunch of different decks in the format. I tried a whole bunch of stuff. If you want to see this Alchemy list, especially if you're playing in the MIQ, it's very, very good. Uh, you can check it out. I uh, just put a whole video. Uh, but Personnel best, number one, Mythic. Um, lots of grinding went into that, but uh, you could check out with like Explorer, like the Angels deck. I tried out a bunch of things. Even in the, I was doing play just because we were camping last month, but uh, we did like Rally the Ancestors deck, Rule Werewolves did well, um, Scissors list with uh, Insole Artifact and like an Artifact shell. So there's videos for all these up on my YouTube as well. You can always find my deck list. This is always public, so if you want to see any of my deck lists, you can also take a look. I think I played some events too. I, I always like to be transparent with what's working, what's not. Um, I went 4 3 with Rakdos in an event. I went 7 1 and then 1 3, where I ran into three blue white control decks in a row that all had sweepers on three. Um, but you can kind of take a look like that. Played a cool Demir list with like Scarab God. Um, so it's all there. You can catch all these lists there or check out my YouTube for content. In any case, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great one and stay safe out there.